Hi kids, welcome to Storytime Online. I'm Miss Elizabeth and today we're doing a story time all about camping. Um, we are in the woods, enjoying our time in a tent and going for a little hike. So we're gonna start with our old friend Ladybug Girl and her friend Bingo. Ladybug Girl and Bingo is by David Soman and Jackie Davis. This is where we should put the tent, says Lulu. She's excited to be camping and to sleep in her new sleeping bag. Isn't this fun, Bingo? We are going to sleep outside. But Bingo isn't standing by her side like he usually does. He's zigzagging all over the campsite, smelling everything. Suddenly Bingo stops, puts his nose straight up in the air, and bolts off to the woods. Papa quickly grabs Bingo by his collar and snaps on a leash. We're in the wild, not our backyard, Lulu, says Papa. Make sure to hold on to Bingo's leash so he doesn't get lost. Don't worry, says Lulu confidently. Ladybug Girl would never let that happen. While her parents and brother are unpacking and pitching the tent, Ladybug Girl and Bingo decide to explore around their campsite. The forest is filled with exciting discoveries. Ladybug Girl and Bingo cast spells with a gnarly old wizard ride on a galloping giant turtle and sip tea with the butterfly buttercup fairies in their secret garden. Then the whole family hikes to a nearby lake. Bingo is pulling so hard that the leash slips through Lulu's fingers. Lulu's brother snatches up the leash. I'll hold him, he says. You're going to let him get away. No, I won't says Lulu, taking the leash back from her brother. When they finally arrive at the lake, they rent a canoe. Everyone has to wear life jackets, even Bingo. Look, there's his life jacket. Lulu thinks that Bingo looks like a brave sea captain. The canoe glides onto the water. Lulu loves the feeling of floating along. When they get to the middle of the lake, her parents stop using the oars and they drift. It is so quiet that Lulu can hear the clouds moving. It's peaceful and she doesn't have to worry about Bingo running off here. Lulu looks over at the side of the canoe. Look, she yells, I see an underwater castle and mermaids. That's just weeds, says her brother. No, it's definitely a castle for mermaids and probably mer dogs too. Maybe her brother needs glasses. After they return their canoe, it's time for a picnic lunch. Lulu eats a giant cheese and tomato sandwich and at least 38 blueberries. Bingo has two bowls of kibble. Everything tastes better outside, thinks Lulu. When they finish lunch, Lulu jumps up and asks, do you want to play, Bingo? He pulls her toward the forest. We could play Explorers in the Jungle. How about, we're trying to find a lost unicorn and we have to watch out for tigers. You stand guard right here, Bingo, Lulu says, hooking a leash over the branch, uh-oh, and I'll climb up this tree to see if I can find the unicorn. Not seem like a good idea. Crack! Lulu hears the snap of a branch and before she can blink, Bingo is racing away with the leash trailing behind him. No, Bingo! She yells as loud as she can. Come back! Oh no, Lulu cries. Where did Bingo run off to? What if she can't find him? What if he is gone forever? No! Ladybug Girl says out loud. She knows she will find him, even if she has to look under every leaf in the forest. 
Ladybug Girl blasts off like a rocket to search for Bingo. She whizzes through a maze of trees, not caring if her wings get snagged on the branches. Bingo, she calls, but he doesn't come. After she leaps over a rushing river and stops beside a humongous boulder, she hears a familiar snuffling sound. Ladybug Girl zooms to the other side, and there, rooting in circles around a pine tree is... Bingo! There you are, Bingo, she shouts, flinging her arms around him. I am so happy I found you! Ladybug Girl stands up and says, let's go back now. She looks around and realizes she isn't sure how to get to their campsite. She ran so far to find Bingo that they could be hundreds of miles away. What if they need a helicopter to bring them back? Bingo tries to climb up the big rock. Up here, asks Ladybug Girl. Holding Bingo's leash extra tight, she climbs to the top of the boulder. From this high up, she can see the entire forest. She sees the old wizard tree. And then looking down, she realizes she is standing on giant turtle rock. Ladybug Girl can even see their tent. Well, Ladybug Girl and Bingo run breathlessly back to the campsite. Mama, Papa, guess what? We were searching for a lost unicorn, but then Bingo escaped into the woods and I chased him forever. And then when I found him, we were both lost in the woods, but then Bingo helped me figure out where we were and we made it back all by ourselves. You aren't lost, said her brother. You were right over there. We could see your wings the whole time. Ladybug Girl looks in the direction where they came from. Hmm. It was really far away. Maybe her brother didn't need glasses after all. Later, after dinner, they toast marshmallows around the fire. Can you believe we are up so late, Bingo? Lulu asked, staring at the stars that cover the whole sky. Wow, there are even stars in the trees, Lulu says. Those aren't stars, her brother says. They're fireflies. Fireflies? You should like them, he says. They're bugs that light up. When it's time to go to sleep, Ladybug Girl wriggles into her new sleeping bag with Bingo. I love you, Bingo, Lulu whispers. It has been a long day, and Ladybug Girl is a little bit sleepy. But tonight, Firefly Girl is up. The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed this book. It's one of my favorite stories about camping. But one of the other fun things that I like to do when I go camping is to go for a hike, just like Lulu did in Ladybug Girl. She goes walking around the woods. I like to go walking around the woods and find berries. Now, I don't know if you like berries. Maybe you like one, but not the other, but I have got a song for you, and it goes like this. Picked a strawberry, picked a strawberry that was growing in the sun. Then I washed it and I ate it and I picked another one. Picked a blueberry, picked a blueberry that was growing in the sun. Then I washed it and I ate it and I picked another one. Picked a blackberry, picked a blackberry that was growing in the sun. Then I washed it and I ate it and I picked another one. Picked a raspberry, picked a raspberry that was growing in the sun. Then I washed it and I ate it and I picked another one or two. So that's my Picked a Strawberry song, which I love because I love berries. And I have one more little song for you before we do our next story. And it's more of an action song. So I want everybody to take their hand like this, hold their arm with their other hand, and scooch back so you can see. And I want 
want you to put your hand really high with all five fingers and shake your fingers. These are your five red apples. Five red apples high in a tree. One looked down and winked at me. I shook that tree as hard as I could. One fell down. Mmm, it was good. How many apples do we have now? Four. Four red apples high in a tree. One looked down and winked at me. So I shook that tree as hard as I could. One fell down. Plop. And mmm, it was good. Three red apples high in a tree. One looked down and winked at me. So I shook that tree as hard as I could. One fell down and it was good. Two red apples high in a tree. One looked down and winked at me. So I shook that tree as hard as I could. One fell down and mm -mm, it was good. One red apple left in this tree. One red apple high in the tree. It looked down and winked at me. So I shook that tree as hard as I could. One fell down, plop, and crunch. Mmm, it was good. Now, around here, you don't often run into an apple tree while you're hiking, but you can think about it. Or maybe you could take a hike through the farmer's market. I don't know. That's where I find my apples. At the store and at the farmer's market, I get peaches. All right. We've got one more story for you today, and that's Curious George Goes Camping, and it's by Margaret H.A. Rays. As you can see, Curious George has discovered one of the best things about camping, which are s'mores. Yum. He's roasting his marshmallows to get them ready. This is George. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. This weekend, George and his friend, the man with the yellow hat, had special plans. They were going camping. At the campsite, the man with the yellow hat unpacked their gear while George looked at all the tents. He saw tents for big families and one just the right size for a puppy and there were even tents on wheels. Would you like to help me put up our tent, George? The man asked. George was happy to help. It would not be hard to set up a tent, he thought, but it wasn't easy. George, why don't you fill our bucket with water at the pump? His friend suggested. We'll need it by our campfire later when we roast marshmallows. Mm, marshmallows. George loved marshmallows. He couldn't wait to try them roasted. Now, don't wander off and get into trouble, the man warned. But George did not hear him. He was already gone. At the pump, George worked the handle up and down, up and down. Soon his bucket was full. On the way back to the trail, he saw a family packing up. George watched a girl pour her bucket of water on a campfire, and the fire sizzled out. George thought that looked like fun. He poured his bucket of water on the next campfire. Hey, yelled a camper, we weren't finished with that yet. The camper began to chase George, but George didn't mean to cause trouble. Now he only wanted to hide. He ran into the forest as fast as he could, but the camper's footsteps followed close behind. George ran faster and faster. The footsteps came closer and closer until suddenly they were passing George. Why, it was not a camper chasing George now. It was a deer. What fun to run with a deer. Forgetting all about the camper and the marshmallows, George ran after the deer. But a little monkey cannot run as fast as a deer in the woods. Before long, George was lost and all alone. Whew. He felt tired and stopped to rest. At first he was worried. He was very far from camp. But there were lots of other animals to keep him company. He saw a lizard sunning on a rock and a squirrel chattering in a tree. 
Then he saw the tail of a black and white kitty poking out from under a bush. He was curious. Would the kitty like to play? George gently pulled the kitty out. But it was not a kitty. It was a skunk and it was scared. The skunk lifted up its tail and sprayed. Oh, the spray smelled awful. The animals tried to get away. George wanted to get away too, but he could not. The smell was all over him. Oh, how would he ever get rid of this awful smell, he wondered. Too bad he could not take a bath in the woods. Then George had an idea. He could wash that smell off in a creek. George jumped into the cold water. He splashed and scrubbed, but he was still smelly. And now he was wet too. But what could he do? George thought and thought. If he climbed up a tree to dry off, would the smell blow away? No, not even high and dry up in the tree. George did not smell better. Poor George. He wished he hadn't wandered so far from camp. He wished he were roasting marshmallows with his friend. Suddenly, George heard footsteps coming toward him. Someone was coming. It was the forest animals, but they ran right by him. They had seen something scary and George saw it too. It was fire. George had gotten into trouble for putting out one fire, but this fire wasn't in the campground. This was an emergency. Quickly, George climbed down the tree and grabbed his bucket. He scooped it up full of water in the creek. Then, being careful not to spill, he climbed back up and swung from branch to branch through the trees. When George got close enough to the fire, he reached down and poured the water on the flames. <sighs> out went the fire with a big hiss. Then, George's friend rushed out of the forest with a ranger. George, he called, I was afraid you would be here. It's a good thing you were here, George, the, said the ranger. We saw smoke from the campground, but you put this fire out just in time. George was glad to help, and the man with the yellow hat was glad to see that George was safe, but he had a funny look on his face. George, he asked, what is that smell? Back at the campsite, George's friend helped him get rid of the awful smell. After a strange bath in tomato juice, George smelled fine. Then the man with the yellow hat invited the ranger to cook dinner with them over their own small campfire. Fires can be nice if you're careful, said the ranger. And look, they're making marshmallows. The best part after finding fruit. George agreed, especially for roasting marshmallows. The end. Well, today I have some other books to share with you, another list of books to share with you. If you enjoy stories about camping, these are good stories for those in probably preschool to first grade. But I love the, this side of it. S'more books for you. I hope you've enjoyed our camping story time and I'll see you next time.